Day 7 in Jamaica, June 10th, 2015. I think it is. Well, I had a fucking crazy day yesterday. As you've seen in my last video. But, uh... Met a lot of people and advertised a lot for everybody yesterday. But uh, I met this one guy in my last videos when I walked up to that store and that lady says, uh, don't film me. Well, there's this guy that says, man, what do you, give me a dirty look, you know, like he was badass. Like, you making money off that video. You better not be making money off that video and, and me being shown in that video. I fucking argued with him for five minutes, man. I don't make money on the deal. I don't need fucking videos from money from video. Money from videos I make on YouTube? Fuck that shit. Well, I ended up... Well, I ended up buying some. A little bit of ganja to help me out. But I told you I was going to show you a big surprise last night. I was disappointed. Somebody brought some, uh, some ganja up here and it had white mold all over it. Mildew. Said, I, man, I'm sorry you went all the way to the town to get that shit, but I can't consume it. All right, nor can I make your hashish out of it because you don't make hashish out of it. You still got that fungus and that mold in there. Sad. It was some nice looking bud, too. So, uh, that guy that, that you probably seen at just a glance of, because I didn't film him. Uh, you probably seen the back side of him, or maybe right up in front when I showed up at the store and gave him a glance. But, uh, he has a tourist business. Traveling, you know, for tourists, you know, you know that takes you guys up anywhere he says he has a whole bunch of you know like quads and stuff like that which I don't know I haven't seen no quad up here yet nor four wheel drive quad but uh he offered me a free food Sunday and he says come down even he said he invited me on my birthday he goes come down on your birthday said, come over on your birthday, and he goes, I'll kill a goat for you free. I said, what, man? He goes, yeah, I'll cook you a goat up free. I said, man, I'll bring my friends down there if you don't mind. He said, bring them all down there, man. The more the merrier. So, uh, I turned around when I was walking out there after he offered me all this shit. Free food Friday, free food on my birthday Sunday. Free goat shit, I say, on my birthday Sunday. He, uh, he offered me a place to stay at his place any time, too, when I come up here. And I said, you know what, dude? I said, you don't have a website yet. And he said, no. I said, I'll tell you what. Today, you write down what you want me to write, and I'll make you a website today, and, and I'll post it on my, I'll pay for everything, every year. But I, I want a place to come in Jamaica. And he goes, he goes, man, you come up here, you sleep anywhere, man. I, matter of fact, he goes, I got some land. I'll help you build a house up here if you want me to build a house for you. <clears throat> Damn, dude. So well worth the $12 a year is what I'll be paying for his domain site. But for $12 a year, I'm tempted to do it to this guy, too. I might do it with this guy. I'm going to take some... I can take pictures of my camera, I found out. It looks like it. Anyway. So I, I'm going to turn around and take some photographs and offer him the same thing, but I don't think so. I'd rather go with this guy because he has more to offer to me. 
lots more. Things I need in life to survive. He says he has he has every almost every fruit you can grow in Jamaica on his property. He has a he told me he has a spice store. And you've seen it in one of the videos. If you go back in my videos, when I was walking down the mountain or coming up the mountain in the Jeep, when I walked down the mountain, I filmed it. And and that's when I got on the very bottom of the mountain. And I said, you know what? Well, my camera ended up dead when I passed the town. But I did film them. I'll film them again today because I got to take pictures of the place. Make a video of, on YouTube for his his website so they can click on the link there and go see his videos. <laughs> Let me see a free place to live at as long as I want to up here and have land to build a house for just a website. Damn, I think I'm going to go all over Jamaica and build everybody's websites for them. No, I'm not going to do it. I got almost a hundred domains that I'm not even doing nothing with. But I'll set up his website, man. What a life. I told him, I said, you know, I can use my, my template on my website, put it on yours, and all it is is marijuana leaves. Hidden, though. And he said, hell yeah. <laughs> I want that on my website. And I said, I figure you did. Justify it. So, luckily, this guy brought up some two types of weed. He said that was the best shit that he had. And I said, I don't give a fuck how bad the crap is. I just don't want mold on the shit because all I'm going to do is turn that shit into hashish. That's what I'm going to do with that crap. As long as it has something I can get make hashish out of it, uh, you got a deal. That's the bread I bought for my breakfast today. I'm shocked it got only that much damage done to it. But uh, I'm not going to enjoy it. You know why? Made for margarine. Fucking people eat margarine need to have their fucking heads stuck up their asses deeper. So they don't know who in the fuck they are in life because after you eat margin, it's going to be the same thing. You're going to wake up morning and you're not going to know who in the fuck you are in life. <laughs> Believe it or not, man, I'm ugly looking. You don't want to see my ugly face while I chit-chat to you today. But you got a little beautiful background right there. How, how's that? Yeah, that's how the news station people talk. They talk on the side, and they got this nice, beautiful palm tree. And they say, yeah, we're in World War III, and yeah, our Israel and, and Iran are fighting each other now. But in reality, it's just Israel fighting Iran to conquer Iran for the United States and the royal bloodline of Britain. And so in the background, they have that little palm tree in the background in there. And they're giving the news to everybody. Well, I'll give you the news today. Today is 5.30 in the morning in Jamaica, believe it or not. Probably about 15 till 6 now. I did show you my windproof lighter. I've been using this all day. Threw some good kefir in there. Yeah, from Brian. Or should I say I made some kefir for Brian? But uh, I'm going to make some hashish for Brian if I can turn around and find a shit. Well, I did find two growers up here in Jamaica. that They got a whole bunch of junk weed. 
So they all volunteered to make hashish out of it. So yeah, I, I likes I likes this a little bit better. That way you got some good view and you can just put something over the screen. Yeah. A little. So I guess Thursday or Friday we're gonna be making ice hash. Uh, hopefully I could do it Wednesday, but uh, I'll make this guy's website while I'm on the internet. I guess you guys can go to the school up here in Blue Mountain. Not on the other side of Blue Mountain. You gotta come on this side of Blue Mountain, on Mavis Bank's side. Just remember Mavis Bank. <laughs> Morning. I told you guys about Brian and his donkeys. Last night I was talking to that kid and the owner of the, the grandson of this place. And he goes, where'd you go at Gringo yesterday? And I said, yeah, I walked on the other side of the mountain. And he just started laughing. And he goes, yeah, and I bet you came across the goddamn white donkey. And I went, what? I said, I sure did. Hell, I couldn't go past that donkey, man. He was right there in the center of the... I couldn't go around him. He goes, you could have. That donkey's so tame, you could have rode him. I said, hell, you can ride that donkey. I wanted to ride him back up here and then kick, his, kick him in his jackass ass and send his ass on back home. So I wanted to do that, but I was afraid I'd get kicked off the side of the mountain and break all my bones and everybody around the world be looking for the, the hippie terrorists in Jamaica. That was so fucking funny. He goes, yeah, you came across the white donkey, I bet. <laughs> so this is what, this is, I want to finish Brian's story. I didn't tell you this. Brian was death appearing, okay? So he's very hard to speak to. And I was, man, my, I woke up, well, when I went to bed, my, I said, man, my goddamn ears are hurting, hurting me, man, like I, like I've been screaming in my ear all day long. And that kid, he he said he was dead, so I was, I was going, okay, I wonder why my ears hurt because I fucking had to yell at Brian in the red house, okay? Brian's the guy in the red house, and you know, that the one guy waved at me and said that, you're, you're invited to come to my house. Just open up the gate any time, come on in and visit me. And he said, everybody, he says, anybody who travels up here, come and visit me. That's what he told me. He says, you have a place to live at, too. Set up your tent up there and just camp out as long as you want. Just keep Brian happy. Go buy him some beers and, and just keep him happy in life, and he'll probably feed you some of his. He had everything, man. He had some gr nice green onions. I showed you those green onions in my other video. Yeah, some good green onions. So uh, I asked him, how many times uh, a month do you hike down to Mavis Bank? Because you're pretty old, and hell, I had a fucking hard time walking down it. But I even had a harder time walking up the goddamn mountain. Matter of fact, I was taking breaks going and wondering if I was going to die in life. And he just laughed, and he laughed. I said, really, I had to sit down a couple times coming back up the side of that mountain as far as I only went. And I had to sit my little white ass down and drink some water. And he just laughed and laughed again. And he goes, well, my mama's alive. My mama's 96 years old. And I go see my mama every Saturday. And he goes, I've done it for 40 years since I've lived up here. And I said, you walk every week to Mavis. I said, so you back, pack all your shit back up from the mountain up here to survive. And he just smiles and he goes, yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> 64 years old, man. He is a tall guy, man. Taller than me. But everybody knows Brian there, so far that I've talked to
course, everybody knows everybody up here. Even everybody knows the gringo now, almost. <laughs> so that's going to be a good day today. Make a website. I don't... I want to tell you guys something. For the last two days, I'm not able to charge up my computer. And I only have like three hours left. Well, they say three hours, but in reality, you only have like about 25 or 30 minutes. And uh, they say there's electricity you can hook up at the school. Now, at the school internet, I found out from this one guy that lives right there by the school. He says the numbers are written on the door, the code. And he says it's free for the public. Anybody who wants to go up there and use the internet, you can. So, uh, I'm most definitely going to go back there today and make the guy's website. I told him I'd just meet him at his house about 10 o'clock, so. Got to get some, filter my drinking water like I've been doing for the last few days. I'm surviving. China hasn't killed me yet, but remember, only China is going to kill you in the slow run, man. So, they, China doesn't want people just drop dead on their products after they use them. Now, they want you to drop dead in like about five or ten years. But I'll make sure I'll consume my chemicals that absorbs all their chemicals. And I got some. I need to start drinking that shit. Clay. Yeah, I need to clean my body out with some clay. I brought some clay with me. I should have brought some charcoal with me, activated charcoal, and I had it. When you come up here, these things are like gold, okay? So bring a couple of them. Because people are borrowing that lighter all the time from me. <laughs> all the time. So, that's the reason why I started using this. Because I can charge this one up and still smoke my weed. <laughs> but when it gets about this far, i got to use this. So I'll just go ahead and use this and enjoy life and... I got clean it too. That's the reason why it's not lighting up too good. Boy, it's not getting hot. You know why? The wind is blowing. So, maybe it is not a windproof lighter. When the wind blowing, it's not getting that little element fucking hot enough. Battery's dead. No wonder it won't light up. Well, guess what? Hells yeah, I got some on battery charger right here. You just squeeze it, screws it right in like this. I got some gum, gum hash. Yeah. I'll be smoking some of that. You just plug it in there. When it's red, it means it's dead. When it's green, it means you're going to be burning clean. Uh, you know what? I bought a whole bunch of these alcohol lighters, like about nine of them. They're all gone. Yeah, they're all gone. You're out scratching my head going, man, what happened to them? Well, I thought I had my other fucking lighter with me. What happened to that? You know what? I'll tell you what. I fucking go sit there and misplace my shit. Find it. Go, yeah, I need this. Put it in your pocket and you go walk away and you don't fucking have it. And you gotta look for it. Well... Then about 90% about of the time it's in your back pocket and you go, what the fuck is it in your back pocket for? You know, I lost my lighter last night. I was going, come on, guys, where's my lighter at? No, I don't have it. I said, well, I remember having it. 
So don't worry about it. I'll find it. Got another one. Man, I bought a couple of these. I'm glad I did. You run one one day. This will last you about three quarters of a day. You can probably get. You know, you take your hit, take your net. Yeah, that one lasted me all day long yesterday, and I was smoking off of it. So, maybe it is a windproof light. You just got to do it when the battery is good. But I bought this. You can't buy one ninety-one proof alcohol here. So if you think you're gonna bring a little stove like I was gonna bring and burn pure alcohol. Not like Mexico and the United States. They're not that far up advanced yet. So uh, yeah, I do want to have 91 proof alcohol. Do a lot of things on it. No, 100 proof is better. I asked them if they sell 100 proof alcohol. The all goes no way. Rubbing alcohol, 71%. Drinking alcohol, 73% rum. Is what they say that's the highest alcohol content. I tried some rum the other day. A little shot of it. I wasn't impressed. I had some better rum. But, uh... I guess we're going to take a bottle of rum up on Mount Blue Peak Mountain and we're going to drink it Saturday night to keep us warm. So uh, I guess that's what we're going to do Saturday night that's coming up. Drink a bottle of rum on Blue Mountain. Now a tour guide up here wants you like $80 to take you up there. And that guy last night, he said he'd take me up there for $80. And he goes, are we going, when are we going to go up to Blue Mountain? I said, listen, man, I'm broke. So I can make it up there by myself. And plus, there's another guy who hasn't born in Jamaica, and he's never seen Blue Mountain Peak. So we just both decided to go up together. And I said, I'm going to let him use the spare bed I have. I'll let him use my tent. I'll sleep in the hammock. Said, uh, you're more than welcome to come up, man, sleep in the tent with him. I said, uh, you know, you're a friend. And he sort of like became silent in life. He thought I was a gold mine and <laughs> and he was digging and digging and digging for my money and found out the gold's not there. So he is really silent. He said he's going to be up here early this morning, but I told him I'm going to take off around 9. So if he doesn't show up, I'll see him tonight for sure. When you come up here in Jamaica and you're looking for some ganja, don't be afraid to ask anybody, the taxi cab driver, uh, anybody you meet, because they will help you, man. They know people who have it. And the ones who have it will come up and offer it to you. But remember that. Well, actually, no, man. Oh, you know what? I asked somebody if they knew it, and they said, yeah, and they took me to this dealer that sells up here. And, uh, yeah, that's... I'll become friends with them, but, yeah, I have to go ask him when I'm out. Go get me some more. But he goes and... 
and gets it for other from other people, okay? It's not like he's the grower. He knows where to buy it at. He goes and gets it. He brings it to you. You just get him stoned all day. Let him smoke all your weed. And he's pretty happy. He hasn't off he hasn't asked me well <clears throat> I'm not gonna go there. Cause I wanna let you be confused of who's 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 who in life. Who's who's in life? Now, I was about to buy some government weed, I thought, but this guy, he got offended. He goes, no, this is my best friend's weed that he grows. And I said, man, why did is it mold it, man? I said, and I told all the Jamaicans, I said, down in Mexico, down in Jamaica, the good shit that they're growing and that the cops harvest, they put it in bags and they go out and sell it. They resell it out in the streets. And I turned around and said, uh, you know, Mexico, they're doing the same thing probably. They're just chopping this shit down, wet, compressing it, and turn around and go sell it to the people. And I can tell the marijuana weed because it's moldy, it stinks, it's trash. And I think that's what the Jamaican government, I'm pretty sure. He said it was his best friend's weed. Yeah, I got it. His friend needs to be educated on uh, how to turn around and cure the marijuana problem. Another thing you do in Jamaica, everybody. Just wave to everybody. Hells yeah, just wave to everybody. And if they don't wave to you and they give you that dirty look like... The fuck you doing on our land, on our island? You just wave at them some more and just smile at them. Have a good day. Now you guys stay up at Flower Lodge. You're gonna have, you're gonna meet the grandsons, okay, of the owner. They're good. Good little kids. One of them, he's 17 years old, and he's going to school as a mechanical electrician on cars. Which I said, a good occupation, especially being up way out here in the middle of nowhere. But he will ask to use your laptop. And just let him. Let him listen to his music. Well, he tried last night, but I told him, man, my, my laptop is not charging up. I need that battery to make that guy's website tomorrow. No problem, Mom. He is sort of disappointed, but he needed to go to sleep anyway, go to school tomorrow, so it was best. Now I bought some rolls that look like this and they're really little. Have you ever come across those? Hell, I don't know the name of it. They're just two little cupcakes. Just look like this color right here, but a little bit lighter. I'll tell you what, that was the best goddamn eating cupcakes I've ever had. Had a little bit of lemon juice right on top of it. And I only bought two of those. But they were delivered up here before it got delivered to the store. And I went to all the stores that looked like I, I would want to go in there and come back out having some money in my pocket. <laughs> Here's another thing. Anybody travels to Jamaica, you got a... For a dollar, it's 116 And uh, at the airport, it's like 96 but up here, you can cash dollars up here, buy things, United States dollars, easily. But they're going to charge you only a hundred to a dollar. Which, I just give them my a hundred with my one dollar bill, and five dollar bill, and twenty dollar bill. And 
And they give you change back too in dollars, in Jamaican dollars. So I was able to exchange some money to break down some, a $20 bill that I had. Morning. Morning. Now, so far, 90% of the people, well, 95% of the Jamaicans responded back to me. There's only that five, no, I don't even think, I think only 1%. 2% that just give you a dirty look and just stare at you when they walk by. Yeah, there's there's about 3% should I say it's happened to me so far. Won't say a word to you. Give you that evil eye. Just smile at them. Just smile at them. Just going, you worthless soul. <laughs> you know what? When I talk to somebody and they don't respond back to me, I never talk to them again. On the job, on the streets, everywhere I've lived at, I say hi to somebody and they just look at me. I just shut up from now on. Walk by that person every day and he'll talk to me. After a while, he'll talk to me. I just walk by him. Just walk by him like he did me. Like, fuck you. I don't know you. You had your chance to get to meet me. I don't want to get to know you. And I know a couple people up here that will try to become my friends in a few days. I'm just going to look at them, give them a dirty look, and just say, same look. Not say a word to them. <laughs> Why not? They do it to me. I'm going to do it back to them. Yeah, I don't like people like that. Fuck you, man. You don't want to get to know me the first time. You'll never get to know me. Only in hell. <laughs> and then you'd be talking to me saying, hey, 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 keep your hands off my soul. Keep your hands off my soul, please. FBI, CIA, Illuminati. I'm not talking about strangers that I don't, don't, don't want to talk to me. Hell, man, there's sometimes I don't talk to strangers on the street. Some people talk to me. I ignore them. Fuck yeah, because I don't want to get to know them. So I'm just being treated the same way in life. And that's the reason why I just laugh at them and just say, no problem. I'm the same way like you sometimes. And you will have a very hard time understanding some of the Jamaicans up here. Especially Brian. Now Brian actually spoke some good English. I understood a lot of his words. But there's this one kid up here. He'll talk to you for an hour. And you, you only hear about one word every... 20 words he says that you can catch on what he's trying to say in life. But he'll talk to you in his language and he won't even, just doesn't blink an eye, thinks you understand everything he says in life. He's probably about 20, 21, good kid. But uh, he has dreams of going to Cuba and going to Mexico and going to the United States and going to England and yeah, yeah, I has all these dreams. I says, well, just work, 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 save your money up and go do it. Yeah, he was talking about Costa Rica and Ecuador. Yeah, 
Yeah, I probably heard, understood about 20% of what he said. But he did say the na names of the country's good, so... <laughs> you, you've, everybody has to experience this life before you guys die, man. Look, I'm, I'm gonna turn 55 next week. 12 screws in my leg to hold my leg up in place. And I walked from, man, I bet you it was nine o'clock in the morning until six o'clock in the afternoon. I walked all day long, so I think I can go to Mountain, Blue Mountain Peak. Are you done? Everybody looks at me, I'm talking to myself, and they sort of look like, what the fuck, man? Who's he talking to? <laughs> and looking at me when they walk by me like, man, you're fucked up in the head. Go, go, go fucking see a psychiatrist. I ate some fruit on Brian's property, man. It was in a tree and it reminded me of blueberries, man. I thought he picked some blueberries, man, when he handed it to me. And I was going, fuck, those are coming out of a tree I had. I don't know the name of them. They, they can tell me a name of it, and then it just goes one out, year out the other year. All the fruit I've eaten, yeah, it's going to take me a couple months because it's Bamari Jomba. Uh, some other stuff is like Ganjombi and uh, Kohana. You know, you're going, what? I don't, I'm just saying names that, that you don't even understand to let you have an idea of what I'm, I'm hearing in life, too. But these people are living off the land up here in Blue Mountain. It just blows me away. They planted all these trees around here. And they're not bunched together. The only thing that's bunched together is the coffee bean plants. But the trees, no, the mango trees, man, you walking down the road. See a mango laying on the floor on the road, man. You just look up there and there's a whole bunch of mangoes in the trees. And you're going, I can eat a mango right now. And you're looking through and picking up all the bad ones on the ground. And you're going, nah, I, I can't eat no mangoes today. But I seen like three trees on the hike. There, there was mangoes there. That if you really had to survive and you wanted to eat, I think you can throw high enough to knock a mango off a tree. Now the owner of the place, how he killed the duck, that pond duck that I ate. Well, of course, everybody ate that soup. It was good soup. Pond duck soup. He said he, he got that bird with a, with a rock. Seeing it coming out of the pond, it boom, threw a rock and Knocked it out. Yeah, buddy. So that's my type of hunting. Hell yeah, and I used to throw good with the rock. I can't anymore, man. My arm, man. The time I throw, I throw my arm out of place. Yeah, I used to kill animals, believe it or not, with the rock. Of course, I was a pitcher one time. I was good. So good, I took my team and pitcher and one pitcher and me. We we won our our championship. When I only played baseball one year in my life. Of course, everything I do in life is only for one year. And then I go to something else. Learn another sport. Now there's a couple sports that I did enjoy doing. Only one that I did for a f quite a few years until I couldn't do it anymore, and that was climbing up mountains like you seen in the earlier video of mine. That bare mountain sits behind Wildflower Lodge. We used to just run down it, get up there, smoke a joint, and just come running down as fast as you can. Now, I need to stop talking to myself. People walking by, and now they're Americans looking at me going, what the fuck, who are you talking to? 
I already smoked two joints, so I, I'm ready to go eat some breakfast. So they got some people staying at this place for two weeks. And uh, apparently they're going to all the schools around here teaching, teaching the students things. That's what I'm understanding from the Jamaicans and what they're telling me about them. I don't talk to foreigners. Well, I, I talk to anybody if they I cross them on a path, ask them where they're from, say, nice meeting you guys. And I told this one guy, I said, man, anybody you meet, first thing you do is you go, how are you doing? How's your day today? Where are you guys from? <laughs> I don't ask them their name. I don't give a damn. Just want to know where they're from, who I'm talking to, from where. <laughs> I advise you guys to do the same thing. And then one day you can say, yeah, I talk to people from around the world. <laughs> now my next few videos, if you guys stuck around this long lit jibber jab, hear my jibber jab every morning for the updates about my stories that I forgot to tell you all. Uh, looks like next Monday, seven more days, we'll be going to... Uh, St. Mer St. Mary's. So, uh, hopefully I'll get to meet a whole bunch of people from around the world. I did meet some people from Switzerland up here. Uh, the grandson of the owner said uh, he met somebody from Mexico. I said, from Mexico? And he goes, yeah. I said, how'd you communicate with him? He goes, oh, he spoke good in or good English I said no way I said, yeah I said now nah, he's probably a say American Mexican maybe no he said no I'm from Mexico hi oh guys don't forget about me man I'm jibber jabbering all right, I'll see you guys later. Yeah, have a good day. Check out my next video that I'm going to be posting. You're going to like this guy. You're going to go meet this guy's house. One I'm going to advertise for him. So I'll make a video for YouTube. So talk to you later.